What's up everybody? Yesterday we got the roadmap for Warzone and Modern Warfare 2 Season 2 um, and they teased that they would put out more tactical information um, on both the Sika Island as well as uh, El Mazra and that's what we're going through today. Um, if you want to read this yourself like always, uh, be linked down below as well as the roadmap video and the roadmap blog post will be linked down as well, uh, linked down below also. So as normal, I'm going to skip this little part up here, other than uh, Season 2 launched on February 15th. Everything else is just a preview of what we got going on in here. Uh, Battle Royale overview, Asika Island debuts with Resurgence, 1v1 Gulag, new contract, public event, The Rusher, and more. General Season 2 changes. Um, introducing Asika Island, uh, like I said, I put out a video before, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did put out a video before going over the Asika Island POIs and what they've released so far. So I'll link that, as well as this blog post they have linked here. Um, so resurgence returns. So this is going to be the most detail we've gotten on resurgence. Um, but roadmap talked about it a little bit. Like I said, check that out. That'll be linked down below. Um, so it gives you the basic rundown of what, just like it was before, um, eliminating squads, finishing contracts, shorten the countdown. Um, and then they put this in here, which I hate this move as one in any squad based version of resurgence squads that stick together are more likely to survive from the initial drop to the final circle coordinate your movements to ensure no operators left behind. We all know holding hands is more acceptable, even though frowned upon depending on who you talk to in regular big map BR, but it's even more frowned upon in a map where you can come back and they literally put in a blog post to stick together and hold hands. But you know, personal preference, I guess. The intel advantage, eliminating any enemy of any team, of a member of any, of, sorry, eliminating any member of an enemy team temporarily reveals their squad mates' positions on the attack map, so just like before you uh, down and full somebody, it'll ping their enemy, uh, their teammates' locations on your attack map. Clutch up and stay alive if your squad mate... If your squad members are down, prioritize your life to ensure they can redeploy. Remember that looting items, completing contracts, and earning elimination shorten their resurgence countdown, so that includes finishing other people's downs. But sometimes waiting out the clock for a few seconds can be the difference between the squad redeploying and untimely and an untimely end of the match. New feature, Restore Honor. They did tease the Restore Honor yesterday, but they didn't really go into detail about it. So they put some more detail in here. Uh, once per match, operators who fall on a Sika Island will drop a dog tag where they perished. If you or one of your squad mates picks up the dog tag, you'll be rewarded with a small cash reward and a UAV ping to scan the area. So just one ping the size of a UAV to show you all the people on the map and supply boxes. Um, UAV ping to scan the area for supplies and potentially the position of the enemy operator who downed you. Here are two strategies for this new feature. Truly honorable. Heading straight for your dog tag after redeployment is a smart way to get a head start on that fresh life. Not if people are camping it. Alternatively, have a squad mate pick up the tag and call out nearby supply boxes so you can quickly build back that loadout. Dishonorable bait. Given the advantage it provides, an enemy dog tag can be used to lure enemy teams into exposing their position. So essentially, camp it. Um, if you see a dog tag in the wild, consider taking an advantageous position, camp it, near it, and pick off any operator who attempts to pick it up. A new path to riches. It talks about cash. Cash piles and ground loot have been increased to at least 800, and cash registers have been increased to at least 500. I really think it should be the other way around. Um, just logically seems to make more sense in my head. Cash will no longer be found in basic and legendary supply boxes, but it can be found as ground loot in containers and in white stronghold supply boxes. I don't know how I feel about that. We'll see how the economy feels, but we could end up seeing them meet back in the um, tan and orange supply boxes, which I swear the orange supply boxes are like nowhere to be found half the time. This emphasizes looting during a match rather than solely completing contracts to rack up cash. Be sure to search every supply box, duffel bag, locker, and other containers to maximize cash during matches. It's you and me, 1v1 Gulag returns. So we are getting 1v1 Gulag as they've talked about before. Um, now there'll be new ground loot. Before it was just armor plate vests, which aren't going to be a thing anymore, which we'll get to. Um, and then lethal and tactical. So now we'll have to see if it's still lethal and tactical or what. But it says new ground loot and spawning loadouts, including assault rifles, SMGs, and LMGs. That changes the match progresses. Shotgun's been removed from the, uh, from the rotation. So you won't spawn with uh shotguns anymore you'll spawn with ars smgs and lmgs but expect new ground loot and spawning loadouts no punctuation there i'm wondering if there'll be other types of guns on the ground for ground loot 
Uh, here's our, our advice for the updated Gulag. Head into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer and try to a var variety of primary weapons within those categories to learn their strengths and weaknesses. Although operator health differs from multiplayer and battle royale, learning how to control each weapon's recoil and knowing their range can be crucial to surviving the Gulag. Turn on bots and go to and set it to 250 health or get a buddy, go into multiplayer private match, set health to 250. Tuck those nades. Remember that a Gulag loadout also includes lethal and tactical equipment. Use it to slightly damage or disorient uh, opponents before dealing the eliminating blow with whatever given weapon. More cash. The Gulag now spawns cash as ground loot to reward players who move around. That's good. Um, helps helps people not camp, even though they advertise camping for everything else. If you can stall your opponent long enough, take time to pick up those stacks of cash to make it easier to rebuild the loadout on redeploy. Also, Season 2 pays out a larger cash reward to Gulag winners, so every W counts. More coming to a Sika Island throughout the season. Uh, I touched on this stuff yesterday. The search and seizure contract, the public event data heist. Um, da drones I touched on as well. Um, there's no new information here. New combatant is a new AI that's going to push you with a pistol and a tactical knife um, instead of just trying to shoot you far away with a shotgun or AR or whatever. So that's going to probably be frustrating unless the health has really changed. General changes. Faster looting, streamlined backpack. The inventory system is shifting away from menus and back to floating loot that will drop out of containers as it does from supply boxes. This reduces time spent navigating the UI so you can move on from collecting resources quickly. If they're not increasing the TTK, this is like a necessary thing. The better to find each operator's roles within the match, medium and large backpacks will no longer be found in the environment. Limited space reduces the impact of static medical supplies, equipment, and kill streaks, so that the decisions you make to carry remain impactful throughout the match. So assuming they're going to keep the same loot system they have now, they won't revert to the old one where you pick up all types of ammo. Um, it'll be where you can still actually manage your ammo and be specific. But it just won't have medium and large backpacks anymore. That'll be just DMZ. Customizable perks get your loadouts faster. Season 2 introduces customizable perk packages. At first, a limited supply of perks will be available to ensure proper balance and viability. Try different combinations of perks to see which ones work the best in different situations. There are also some upcoming changes to how players obtain their loadouts in the match. Primary weapons can be purchased at buy station at a more affordable price, and the cost of loadout drop markers has also been reduced. Furthermore, second loadout drop public event will activate in the match, taking place in the first and fifth circles. So I like that now we're going to be able to customize perks. It'll be interesting to see what perk packages really become meta, and I guess it'll probably depend on how you play the game. Uh, the other thing that's nice is cheaper primary weapons are already, what, 2500 So I'm assuming they're going to be 2000 or 1800 I can't imagine they go super cheap. Um, loadouts, right now it's, what, 8000 per person. I wonder if we'll see, like, 6000 per person um, to where the most expensive one's 24000 or if they'll just go back to, like, 10000 like it was in Warzone 1. Uh, deploy in a three-plate vest. All players will now begin their battle royale match with a three-plate vest. Varying vest sizes will no longer be part of the loot pool, so you can focus purely on looting armor plates to keep your vest topped off between fights. Players will additionally gain a slight movement speed increase while inserting armor plates, which means you can sprint through doors while plating. These changes will help you get to safety more quickly. So I'd like to see them bring back the old Warzone 1 satchel still and not have plates necessarily be part of your inventory. Um, because, like, that's my one big issue with Fortnite is... There's what, like six, seven slots in Fortnite, which is about what there is. At least weapons don't count, but we'll see how this all uh, feels when you're trying to carry a certain amount of plates. Because you could have eight before and it wouldn't affect how much ammo and stuff you could carry. Buy station adjustments. Spawn locations for buy stations are being adjusted in Season 2 and these spawns will be consistent from match to match. Furthermore, all buy stations will have an unlimited stock of loadout drop markers. I like the unlimited loadout markers. Um... Their price too high for it to really matter now, but now that they're bringing down the price, it's good that they're bringing back unlimited drop markers. Um, and hopefully they, I wish they would just keep the spawns all in the same places and you could just memorize them. Um, and hopefully they're more spread out throughout the map and not, you have two in one spot and nothing else for 500 meters. And then you got two right next to each other and so on. Uh, Stronghold reward tuning season two brings changes to reward operators. To rewards operators will earn upon completing strongholds or black sites as well as adjustments to ai combatants just make the ai fairly easy to kill or don't give them like aim bot through smoke it's so frustrating dmz overview i'm not really going to go over this if you want if you're interested in dmz this will be linked down below but ashika island comes to dmz balance change to enemy spawn points and missions a new faction for modern warfare 2 uh players you shouldn't have to own modern warfare 2 to get stuff in a free game mode other than if it was like a skin or something but not not more missions uh, let's see. General overview. All modes. Path to Ronin. We went over that yesterday. The UI and the UX. We'll have to see what that actually is. Um, El Masra POI updates. 
The Warzone 2 map will have a few updates as part of the season. Intel from out of part of season 2. Intel from out of Masra indicate that a downed aircraft for, uh, has been spotted in the uh, north of Said City. So it's going to be like the Afghan like the Afghan map from the old Modern Warfare 2. Well, enemy reinforcements have gone underground resulting in subterranean cave networks. So I guessed that right yesterday. Between multiple points of interest in the north. Also, we are confirming reports of a train being recommissioned and ready for passengers on the main railroad line in the region. I'm really hoping it's not the crappy subway system that we had in um, Warzone 1. I didn't even like it on the Caldera. It was better on Caldera. I didn't even like it on Caldera. Um, I, I've never been a fan of how Warzone done fast travel. So we'll have to see what that actually is like. Down Planet Satik Cave. Veterans of Call of Duty franchise may have recognized the outdoor space within the Satik Cave region looked familiar before Season 2. And the upcoming change to this point of interest all but confirms those suspicions. For those who do not know the tactical strategies needed, the new Down Plane offers a great amount of cover in between large cave openings, houses, and bunkers. Used to cut off sight lines from snipers around the area or as a place to reload before re-engaging. Afghan was a good, classic, fantastic, great map from, mono, from the original Modern Warfare 2 and the proper Modern Warfare 2. Uh, new Underground Cave Network. Whether you played Battle Royale or DMZ during this past season, you may have noticed the space between Rohan Oil and Tarak Village was only populated by military camps, hills, and small homes. With the Season 2 update, a new network of caves will open, giving operators an additional option for getting around this part of the map by foot. These networks have five distinct entrances. Some are straight drop-downs, such as one tucked within a garage, while others are cave openings. Be mindful of equipment and kill streak traps around these entries and exit points, or set up some of your own to prevent a trailing squad from following your path. As long as they have ways that you don't get stuck in zone, great. As long as you can't be, like, stuck in zone because zone pulled, like, on both, on all the outside entrances, on the cave entrances, as long as you can go up through garages and stuff, it shouldn't be a problem. New passenger train. The freight train is no longer the only locomotive rolling around Almazar's major rail network. The passenger train will offer yet another quicker way of traveling around the map and stocking up on items, including through legendary supply boxes that could be found within its sleeper, bar, and normal passenger cars. Unlike the freight train, all cars in this locomotive are covered with only a few allowing access via open skylights in the roof. So that means, I'm assuming, you will not be able to see outside of the train. They will not be able to see in the train. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays, but I'm glad it's not a fast travel train. Traveling through the cars on this train is also different compared to doing so on the freight train, as it involves opening the doors in between each one. Take the extra second to peek by slowly opening the doors if you want to stealthily engage operators in other cars, or barge straight through while plating up for an aggressive start to... In, to the ensuing fight. I mean, I prefer to play it up before I slammed open a door and made a bunch of noise. Um, so the Ronin challenges, uh, I'm not going to go into this. It'll be in-game. It's here if you want to read it. Um, but they're pretty simple. Integrity. For Warzone, get top 10 finishes. Honor. Collect your dog tag five times. Sincerity. Uh, complete five assassin contracts. Well, I don't know what the assassin contracts are, but we'll have to see. It's a new contract, I'm assuming. Um, that's only three tracks. I thought there was five challenges. Uh, it's just three challenges, I guess. Um, I thought it said five yesterday, but I guess I'm wrong. UI UX updates, more in patch notes. Um, uh, it's just improving the overall flow of game menus. Uh, these changes and improve navigation and organization of the camera menu. A more polished social tab, quick equip my items from the battle pass, store bundles, and more. Keep an eye out for season two patch notes, which will go into more detail and general changes, including crash and stability improvements, audio adjustments, which we need. Weapon balance, which we need, and more, which mean, hopefully means like TTK, increase to movement speed, stuff like that, hopefully is coming. Then upgrade to Modern Warfare 2, get rewarded in Warzone 2. If you don't already have it, you don't want it, don't. Um, it's really not worth it, unless you just want random free shit or the other DMZ faction or whatever. It's your money, I guess. Decide how you want. But that's all. Um, enough of my rambling. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you spending any time on my channel, whether it was just clicking through a video, watching a whole video. I really do appreciate it. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for more for my patch note video that's going to come out next week. Uh, I want to make content on the new guns. I want to get back to my Call of Duty content um, for any, any other content I upload. And let me know down below what you think of the information we've gotten from Season 2 so far. The more for information I hear, the more positive I feel. Uh, but I'm holding on to my opinion until I get the patch notes. But let me know what you think down below. Um, some very interesting stuff. Exciting if done right. Horrific if done wrong. Um, and like I said, I'll link this blog post below as well as my video yesterday and the roadmap blog post from yesterday and i'll go ahead and link my sika island video and the blog post related to that as well down below and along with those also have my tiktok uh and instagram link down below which i post on four to five days a week uh i'll have my twitch link down below which except for being out of town for a week um or however many days it is being out of town i, hope I won't be online for about a week um but other than that i stream just about every day 
And then I have my Twitter link down below, which is just whatever I feel like tweeting about. It's not really gaming specific. It's a lot of sports, especially during football season. Um, and so check those out if you want. But I will see you on Asika Island. And Almazra, get frying. Have a good day. Bye.